After we've pre-processed our data, we then need to fit a model to it. In other words, we will estimate how much bold activity there was for each condition in each voxel in the brain. To begin, from the SPM GUI, click on Specify First Level. Note that the first field that needs to be filled in is the Directory field. To keep our results organized, go to the MATLAB terminal, navigate to the sub-08 directory, and type MKDIR First Level. Then, double-click on Directory and select the first level directory you just created. All of the output of the first level analysis will go into this folder. Next, we will fill in the timing parameters section. Under Units for Design, select Seconds and enter a value of 2 for the interscanned interval, which is your TR. Then click on Data and Design and click twice on New Subject or Session to create two new sessions. For the scans of the first session, go to the Funk directory and use the Filter and Frames fields to select all 146 volumes of the warped functional data. In other words, those files beginning with the string SWAR. Do the same for the volumes in the second session. Go back to the field for the first session. There are two conditions in the experiment, and both conditions occur in each run. Click on Conditions and then New Condition twice to create two new condition fields. For the first condition, double-click on Name and type Inc for incongruent. We will now need the onset times for each occurrence of the incongruent condition. First. Go to the website github.com slash andrewyan, click on the SPM scripts repository, and click on convert onset times. Click on raw, and then right click and save the file into the flanker directory, making sure to remove the .txt extension. From the MATLAB terminal, make sure you are in the flanker directory and type convert onset times. This will convert the .tsv files into onset times text files that can be read by SPM. When the script finishes, navigate to the directory sub08 slash func and type the following. Inc run one equals import data in parentheses, single quotes, incongruent underscore run one dot txt, close quotes, close parentheses. If you then type inc run one colon comma one, this will return the onset times for the incongruent condition of run one. Copy the onset times, then double click on the onsets field and paste the timing values. Click done. In this experiment, each trial lasted for two seconds. If we enter the number two in the durations field, SPM will assume that it is the same duration for every trial. Now do the same procedure for the congruent condition for run one and the incongruent and congruent conditions for run two, remembering to enter a duration value of two for all of the different conditions. Here I'm typing the code that you'll need to display the onset times for each of the remaining conditions. When you are done, click the green Go button. The model estimation should only take a few moments. When it is finished, you should see something like this. Now that we have created our GLM, or general linear model, we will need to estimate the beta weights for each condition. From the SPM GUI, click Estimate, and then double click on the field Select SPM.mat. Navigate to the first level directory and select the spm.mat file you just created, and then change the Write Residuals option to Yes. Then click the green Go button. This will take a few minutes to run. When you have finished estimating the model, you are ready to create contrasts. 
If we estimate a beta weight for the incongruent condition and a beta weight for the congruent condition, for example, we can take the difference between them to calculate a contrast estimate at each voxel in the brain. Doing so for each voxel will create a contrast map. To create these contrasts, click on the results button of the SPM GUI and select the SPM.mat file that was generated after estimating the model. You will see the design matrix on the right side of the panel. Click on Define New Contrast and in the name field type ink minus con. Then in the contrast vector window, type 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and then click Submit. If the contrast is valid, you should see green text at the bottom of the window saying name defined, contrast defined. Make sure that your contrast manager looks like the figure below and then click OK to create the contrast. Double click on the contrast ink minus con to open the results window. You will first need to set a few options, which are explained in more detail in the link to the ebook below. When you have finished specifying the options, you will see your results displayed on a glass brain. This shows your results in standardized space in three orthogonal planes, with the dark spots representing clusters of voxels that passed your statistical threshold. In the top right corner is a copy of your design matrix and the contrast you are currently looking at. And at the bottom is a table listing the coordinates and statistical significance of each cluster. The first column, set level, indicates the probability of seeing the current number of clusters, C. The cluster level column shows the significance for each cluster measured in number of voxels, or KE, using different correction methods. The peak level column shows the T and Z statistics of the peak voxel within each cluster, with the main clusters marked in bold and any subclusters listed below the main cluster marked in lighter font. Lastly, the MNI coordinates of the peak for each cluster and subcluster is listed in the rightmost column. If you left click on the coordinates for a cluster, the coordinates will be highlighted in red and the cursor in the glass brain view will jump to those coordinates. You can click and drag the red arrow header in the glass brain if you like, and then right click on the brain and select any of the options for jumping to the nearest supra threshold voxel or the nearest local maximum. To view the results on an image other than the glass brain, in the results window in the lower left, which contains the fields p values, multivariate, and display, click on overlays and then select sections. Navigate to the SPM12 canonical directory and choose any of the T1 brains that you like. In this case, I will select the average 152 brain. You will now see the results displayed as a heat map on the template brain you selected, and you can click and drag the crosshairs as you do in the display window. If you place the crosshairs over a particular cluster and click the current cluster button in the results window in the bottom left, the statistical table will reappear, highlighting the coordinates of the cluster you have selected. When you have finished running the preprocessing and the first level analysis, we will then need to run this for each subject in our study. To speed up the process, we will learn about scripting, to which we now turn.